the matter. Um, so I asked you to review a video today. What was that, on, on what subject was that video focused? Anyone? What did it talk about? Matthew. Matthew. There was one, when one of us focused on model connected structures for. Good. Scale free networks. So the other was network structures for okay 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 so it involved sort of physically placed things and particularly you should have gotten exposed to what was there spatial location and was there were things fixed in space or was there movement movement so we're dealing here in short with something that involves spatially situated agents, agents that are situated and placed in space. But more than that, they move in space. They exhibit mobility. And um, that second lecture did, did uh, comment um, on, on both these features of, of incorporating spatial components of models and incorporating mobility in models. So can anyone give me some motivations for either of those? Like why, why incorporate aspects of space, of spatial layout within a model? Uh, yeah, so is it bad? Yes. You might be wanting to investigate how interventions affect people that are in different spatial contexts. So you might, people might be crowded and other, uh, other Good. interventions affect them. Very yeah. Different. Good, good, good. There, you know, some people might be in a crowded environment, for example, um, or an environment with fewer resources, like in terms of ability to seek care, like in a northern community where all there is is a nursing station. And if someone gets seriously ill, they have to be flown hours down to Saskatoon or Regina, for example, for care. So that's good. Different, different situations in space. How about another reason? Yes, Tony. Uh, to account for spatial variation. Okay. Yeah, spatial variation in, like, density. the density of people and the degree to which we mentioned earlier to, to which they have resources. Okay. So so that's good. Um, there can also be risks built up in the environment, like pathogens, right? Like there could be something on a surface that can infect people. Right? I got infected by norovirus over the, the break, and that's surface spread. Uh, probably touched a surface which had it, um, and uh, and that is risk, and it's a spatial phenomenon. How about how about other reasons for for capturing space? Anyone? Yes, here it is. Okay, so mobility is an extra layer on top of it. And yeah, maybe we'll pivot to mobility because mobility takes some spatial context, some situation of agents in space and allows them to move around. Now, why go beyond just representing space and, and representing, by the way, here are some motivations for, for spatial uh, embedding, spatial clustering, Maybe, maybe emergent behavior when you intervene um, that is different across space, different types of interventions, which are spatial, like creating a, cor a, a cordon sanitaire, a, a sort of a, a, a blocking area around a community, et cetera. Um, but then when it comes to mobility, we further have this ability of agents to move. Why does that? Why does that add extra insight often? Or uh, why is that extra significant? It changes the connections. Changes the connections. That's a really good way to put it, Matthias. Changes what's connected with what, right? Um, you might have two communities, and if there's no mobility, it's you know, located different places. If there's no mobility between them, if there's no one going back and forth, an outbreak in one, wouldn't spread to, to form the other. 
But if there's mobility, suddenly you get this uh, conduit, right? It's almost as if they become located next to each other, almost, right? You, you get this. And it's not because they are located next to them, but because you have these, these agents that can bring, um, bring pathogen back and forth. So that mobility is, is, is really important. Um, mobility can lead to influence. Um, uh, it can lead to, you know, what's other, otherwise a very sparse area to actually lead to a lot of infection spread. I remember early on in the pandemic, there were, and, and some decision makers, I was working in the health system, I'd been grabbed by the health system for my academic post for over a year. And there were some decision makers in the health system who had a bit of hubris. And they said, look, rural Saskatchewan and by extension, Northern Saskatchewan, um, it's very low density. Not many people per square kilometer, right? Um, how's infection gonna spread there? You know, so few people, it, it's not going to spread very effectively. And there's, it's certainly true that, that um, there's fewer people to infect, but if those people congregate together periodically, they have large meetings for weddings, or if they have meetings for church every Sunday, or if they get together, you know, on a regular basis for for curling or, or have hockey tournaments or you have in place schools in those areas. It brings people together, right? What, what otherwise must be spread out comes together and that can lead to exposure and, and spread back to these different communities. So mobility, this ability for people to move along uh, around does allow for crime. Of course, some of the areas in the north have extremely crowded housing also because of you know a lack of investment in housing infrastructure and you have uh, you have a lot of people exposed to very crowded environments even there even though there's vast areas of wilderness you know people can be locally crowded but mobility has extra significance and mobility can lead to these patterns that emerge and here for example prions drop by by deer that go to draw water from water sources. They converge there and they move away and they drop prions um, in these areas that can then infect other deer, for example. And you can have different communities where it starts in one community and it moves to another because people migrate between communities, move between communities, right? Um, so we have, we have many reasons for incorporating spatial mobility in models in brief. And that video talked about some. Today, we're gonna to build up a model with spatial mobility, okay? We're gonna build up together and you're gonna submit it on the Canvas site, okay? And again, I'm gonna post it along the way, okay? Again, I'm gonna go fast and I'll post it successive versions. So if you fall behind, you can, uh, you can use those versions. I do wanna highlight one of the big reasons I'm undertaking this exercise is assignment two directly involves these things that I'm doing today. And so this is gonna help those of you who are doing the assignments a lot. Other projects will also benefit from it. Okay, great. So um, we're gonna create a new model, okay? And um, we're going to call it, uh, I'm gonna do new model on any logic and it's gonna be called neighborhood mobility v1 and its model time units here is going to be days okay we're going to be dealing with with um excuse me I'm, i'll make it hours just for for simplicity we'll make it hours there we go okay um eight will be eight hours a working day um, in traditional sense okay hours 24 hours in a day I'm gonna say finish here. So neighborhood mobility, great. Okay, um, so we're going to have a, uh, a model over here that we're going to elaborate with successive features. Now, this model will involve um, 
continuous mobility among a set of waypoints, a set of particular locations. And some of them will be more generic commoditized locations like community locations. And some will be locations closely tied with an individual like their home. And then there'll be some in between kind of like schools and workplaces, which are not specific to an individual, but which are, are um, and with which they're associated. Okay, so we're going to add a set of, um, of agents here, okay, in quick succession. So we're going to add agent type home, okay? Um, so again, right, right, new here, agent type home, right? And we'll make it a home, great. Uh, we're going to add an agent type and we'll make it a workplace, okay? Um, uh, and we're gonna add an agent type new, agent type uh, school and and then one one final place which will be a community um, um, community place uh, uh, community place yeah you know? um, and so that could be a grocery store it could be a could be a uh, curling rink whatever and then we're going to add in a person okay? I'm doing all those in the same basic way. So what did I do? I did home, I did workplace, I did school, I did community place, and I did person. Now, there's some nice finesse that we could put onto this that, I, that I'd that i love to show you. Um, we could use subclassing to reflect the fact that all of these uh, these places, schools, workplaces, homes, community places, these are all places. They all share properties by virtue of being places. And I'd love to do that, but in the interest of time, I'm going to go lightly um, on this and, and focus on the things you need, particularly for the basics in assignment two or, or for these sort of models. Um, great. Um, so for each of these, I want to associate an icon, okay? Let's go down from the top. Let's do for a community place. And we're going to go down and find some icons down from this pictures palette. So the pictures palette here, and we're going to create a, a community place. Um, and I don't have a great suggestion for the image to use. Uh, I'm going to use a box. Maybe it's a box store, a big box store, like Canadian Tire or something. There we go. Um, uh, so where did I do? I went to palette and I went down to this pictures and I, I dragged in a box to community place. And let's do this in quick term for home. Um, so I, I have this now uh, dragged down here in a separate pane so I can quickly grab it. I'm going to grab a house and put it up here in home. Notice I'm situating it in these crosshairs. That means it will appear at the same visual position as its logical or scaled logical position. Um, if we're off, off base, it would be displaced from that. Okay, so a house is, uh, is, a, is a, we're, we're using for a home. Uh, for a workplace here, uh, I'm going to put in a... Um, a warehouse, or say a factory, that, that's a good one for a workplace. And then for a school, we'll put in a, well, um, <laughs> a retail store, a, uh, a, a warehouse. Um, what's the least bad of the options? I know some of you are eyeing that fighter jet. Um, <laughs> um, a re retail store. Well, sometimes the way education is going, I wonder if it's becoming a retail store. Maybe we'll put in the warehouse. That kind of looks like a one-room schoolhouse um, out, out, out in front near College Drive. Okay, there's a school. And finally, we'll go to person, and we're going to drag in a person agent into person. There we go. Okay? Okay. So now we have an 
image or person. And you know, these, these are not particular. I suspect some people out there probably have ships and trucks and forklifts for yours. And uh, I'm not gonna mark them down because of it. Um, uh, okay. <laughs> Okay, I, I know some mischief is underfoot, is underway. Um, okay, um, great. M maybe school should be the clock. You're counting the minutes down or something till you're out. Um, okay, um, great. So now we have these um, these places. Let's now go build up uh, some logic around them, right? Um, so uh, we're going to need to have populations of these. These classes denote personhood, homehood, community placehood, schoolhood, and workplacehood, workplaceness, you know, what it means to be a workplace, right? Now we got to add populations of instances of, of agents of these, right? So um, we're going to go do this. And, and please do them in the order I'm saying to spare yourself some grief, okay? Um, so, uh, I think before we do this, um, uh, I'm tempted to, yeah, let's let's add to main uh, uh, population size, okay? Um, an assumption about population size. What would I add here to capture an assumption, capture and communicate an assumption about population size? Anyone? What sort of thing is it I add? Parameter, Parameter indeed. Yeah, so here we go. Population size. And I, I kind of like to put it over there in the left, uh, population size. And it's a an integer, right? It's a count. Um, so, so we made that in population size. Mind you, this is in Maine, okay? And that's going to be a count of people. And maybe initially we'll put 250 people here, okay? 250. I'll be posting this soon if anyone's falling terribly behind. 250. Okay, great. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Um, that's going to be the count of people, but let's go create populations. And we want to do these in a certain order because some are going to refer to others. So, so I'm doing this um, with malice of forethought, with, with, with uh, th some thinking ahead of time. So first, uh, we're going to create schools. Um, so I'm going to create a population of schools, right? Um, and here we go. Um, I'll call it schools. And this will be a population of agents. And uh, its size will be uh, population size, population size. I don't, I don't know why it's doing that. Uh, divided by 50. Okay. So we have for every 50 people in the population, we have a school. Okay, um, great. 250 people by default in the population. We're gonna have, have five schools. Okay, um, that's for schools. We okay with that? Make sure it's a population. Okay, eh? okay. Let's, let's, let's go put in place some workplaces. Okay. Um, so uh, we're gonna go drag in some workplaces here, come on. Um, and we'll call them, for lack of a better term, workplaces, great. And we're going to have uh, this be equal in count of workplaces for every one for every 10 people. So population size divided by, guess what? That's one for every 10 people, it'd be population size divided by what? 10, good, good, at least some people are awake. Okay, um, so I'm gonna drag this over here, okay? Um, are we okay? Okay, next up, we're gonna put in place homes, homes. Okay, um, and these are going to be called homes. No surprises here, ladies and gentlemen, no surprises. Population of agents, and it's gonna be population size divided by, and we'll make one home for every, let's say five people, okay? So population size divided by, by five. You okay with this? 
So there's a set of homes. Okay. Okay, great. Um, and finally, there's going to be a count of, by the way, you notice as I'm doing this, it's putting these things in here. That's an indication visually that, that uh, we're adding populations involving these things. And um, time was, and this may or may not still be true, if you located this, they'd, they'd appear visually offset where it appears visually to be offset from this. I, I think that's not automatically true anymore, but in any case, so I'll, I'll just mumble about that. Okay, the final thing we need to still add is the what? The key one, it's the population of what? Of people, yeah. Okay, uh, so we're gonna add a population of people, and this one we're gonna actually call populations, not persons. Population, oh, pop, not populations, population, no. okay. And guess what? And it's gonna be a population of agents. All these are population of agents. Make sure they have that dot dot between the square brackets there. Do you see that? Between the square, that's an indication it's a what? Begins with P, ends with N, population, not, not just a single agent. If I, said, if I said make it a single agent, it doesn't put that and you know something's wrong. That's your red flag, okay? Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, a population, and what is its population size going to be? Population size, good, population size. Okay, well, population size, okay? Are we okay with this? Okay, we're, we're, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost to a milestone. The one thing I want to do is I want to initially set these to all be placed uh, willy-nilly across the space randomly. So we can at least see them. So they're not stacked atop each other like cordwood. Yes, oh wait. Okay. Oh my gosh, indeed. I I, I, I uh, elaborated this uh, in my head, but, but inconsistently, thank you. So yes, let's, uh, excellent point, uh, Ben. I really appreciate that. Let's drag in community places. And fortunately there's no, uh, dependencies here, which would uh, confound our efforts, make it a, a, a community places also account. And we'll have a population size divided by, gosh, we'll have a bunch of, of, um, of these community places, population size um, divided by two, let's say. Okay, great. Thank you. Much appreciated. Community places. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So the final thing we're going to do is go to Maine. And for now, we're going to change this. But right now, we're just going to go down and place these willy nilly um, in that space. So go to Maine and go down Maine um, to layout type and make it random. How did I do that? I went to Maine. I drag down here to space and network area, space and network area, and I went to layout type random. And it's applied to all of these different agent types, not just it, I could unselect them if I didn't want people placed randomly, for example, but it, here I'm just gonna start with everyone placed randomly. Are we okay with this? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, Build early, build often. Run early, run often. Take it from an old man. When you build a model for client, try to always keep it, as my colleague Jeff McDonald says in Sydney, keep it within 30 minutes of being run at all times. Okay. Um, so we're going to take this simulation. Maybe I'll call the simulation baseline because uh, it'll be a reference simulation. Baseline. Whoa. Baseline. Here we go, baseline. And build it up here first. That's this little one here. Build completed successfully. It is officially a happy camper. And right click on baseline and um and now <laughs> well um the community places so sort of the big box, this is a community, well, well accoutred with big box stores is what I'll say. 
and people um, between them. Um, maybe we'll shrink down the big box stores so they don't so dominate the landscape. Um, so I'm going to go to um, community places and I'm gonna shrink this, the size of this so it's not quite so exuberant in its depiction. So I just squeezed it down. And so now the, the commercial environs are in some sort of better proportion compared to the factories that make them possible. Okay, so now we have these scattered willy-nilly over some space. If I had another hour, I'd probably do this in a GIS and we'd see Saskatoon, our fair city, depicted on this very map. And we, we would scatter them around the city, but um, that will be left um, for your imagination and for certain videos. Okay, great. Um, so now, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna do a little bit more here. I want to go and uh, have people, well, actually, let's go post this. I promised that I would post it and that as well early and often. So that I will do. So here we go. Um, and we're gonna go to models, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I'm going to post neighborhood mobile. Oh my gosh. Um, okay. I have a fair number of models in there. Okay, uh, there we go. It's posted for any any who are lost or, or um, exhibiting problems or have models that are exhibiting problems. Um, okay, great. So that's version one. I'm gonna save it as version two. Um, if I were using Git here, I might commit it and push it. And now I'm on to a new version. Okay. So now we wanna associate each person with a home. Okay, Are you okay with that? Okay, so let's uh, let's go and and do so. Okay, um, uh, so here we're going to uh, go to person, and how would we how would we say uh, add an assumption that each person is associated with a home? How would I encode that assumption in any logic, and in fact communicate it from the population to the person? Yes, here we go. Parameter indeed. Parameters are our friend. Parameters encode assumptions and communicate those assumptions from the point of creation to, to the, the, the artifact of the model making the assumption. In this case, it's, it's person. So to person, we add a parameter and that parameter will be their home. Were it only so, ladies and gentlemen, were it only so in this world um, that everyone had a home. Okay, so we have we have a home and we have a type. And what type is this? Is it a string? Is it a date, a rate, an integer, a Boolean, or something else? It is indeed a home. Um, uh, Matthias in a, in a stentorian voice. Oh, was that Ushwal? Okay, it was Ushwal Stentorian boy. Uh, so I, I appreciate I appreciate Stentorianness in all its forms. Okay, great. So that's a home, ladies and gentlemen. This is a parameter, and the parameter is going to hold a home. Parameters encode assumptions about the the, the, the uh, artifact in which they're placed. In this case, uh, in, in person characterizes an assumption about the param the home for it. But parameters serve to communicate those assumptions from the point of creation. What is it that creates the set of people here? We created it earlier. Begin with a P. Population. It's a population. Where does the population live? In, it, it lives in person? No, in Maine, indeed. In Maine. Um, so we go to Maine. We go to the population of people, all right? And, and we are going to, you notice now there's a home area of this, right? That specifies their home. We're going to specify their home. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to lend them a home, okay? Um, 
and uh, we will go and uh, place this in homes. So these are the homes, and we're going to draw a random home. We're gonna we're gonna pick a home randomly from. Them. Now we could do it differently. We could place them systematically into you know person zero, home zero, person one, home one, and all the way up to person maybe five. Uh, you see, up to person four, home home zero. So so maybe maybe the first five people go to home zero, the next five people go to home one, the next five to home two. We could do that, and it actually wouldn't be hard at all. But um, but here I'm putting them into random homes. Okay. Um, sorry, it doesn't appear nice, and I was just going to riddle you with a question about why that is. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it it does? They don't appear at the home. So so we're going to show this, and if we run it, we will see nary a difference um, from before. But if you scroll down here, watch watch this. If I scroll down to to the population, and I were to look at each person in turn, I find oh this person is associated with home fifteen. This person is associated with home twenty. That's person one. Person two, well, the third person in the population, zero, one, two, is associated with home 38. Why aren't they, why aren't they appearing there? Can anyone say? Yes, Ben. This layout is still random. Yeah. So so let's go change that. We can leave the layout to be random for schools and workplaces, maybe, and, and the actual locations of homes. But people should be placed in their home. Yeah. So, so let's go back to Maine, and let's go down Maine, and, and let's let's change this, right? So, uh, we are going to now, instead of uh, just relying everyone to to be random, we're going to in fact place agents from the other areas, except uh, in this population. I'm going to leave them in the environment, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the population, and I am going to say initial location, put them in a specified point, ladies and gentlemen, okay? Um, and uh, we're going to place them in the point dictated by their home. Now, um, this takes a, a slight bit of of uh, awareness in any logic, but if you if you look at this little light bulb, it it indicates that um, there's a a, a a variable, a context variable called self that's aware that basically is referring to the person. Okay, so I'm going to say self dot, and what do I need to find out to figure out their x location? I need to find out their what home. Yeah. So I need to find out their home, okay? Um, and uh, and it, for some reason, it's not auto-completing it. I would expect it to, to do this. Uh, and I believe it's called get X and, and Wade can go, correct me. Let's, let's go do a build here. I'm doing this uh, off the top of my head, but, uh, and get Y, okay? There we go. So, oh, um, get Y. So my home, now self is not something like this in Java. It's just something any logic makes available when we're setting, setting these properties, we can refer to their characteristics. It's not this. This is this whole thing is located in Maine. So this would refer to what? Maine. Self is referring to this person who's being created. It's nothing in Java. It's just any logic kind of minutiae. Self dot home. So my X location um, is going to be of the person in this population. We're setting their home here. And, and then we're going to set their location to be that home's X location. Their Y location be that home's Y location. Are we okay with this? Okay, I'm not sensing, you know, uh, a revolt in the classroom, but neither is there the crowd going wild. Oh my gosh, there's stone. Uh, what's that? 
it still didn't work. Okay. Okay. Well, um, uh, that is uh, an interesting thing. Now, why why is that not working? Um, Check uh, out the light bulb by the X label. Yes. Like yes. not the code block itself, but the label to the left of it. Oh, yes. Uh, the light bulb. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, only in the user defined. Okay. Okay. Back to the... Thank you. Thank you, Wade. Everyone needs a Wade. Um, okay, so we're gonna go set this to use back to user defined. There we go. Um, thank you, Wade, indeed. Um, okay. Um, and and now we will run it. And <laughs> well, okay. So so uh, people are at their homes, but everyone is batched up. Okay. This is. Uh, not exactly what we wanted. Um, there's actually an easy way we can deal with this. And I think I will show that because it's straightforward. There's there's another way that would allow us to finesse it as well. Um, but I'll, I'll show the way that should give you a bit of extra versatility. Great. So what we're going to do for the user defined, we'll go to each of these populations and we will put in their locations explicitly here, okay? So schools will be drawn from uniform. It'll be a uniform draw of their location between, here we go, between zero and this dot space width, okay? Um, uh, so space width, okay? And y is going to be similarly, but this dot space height. Maybe some of you can't see it back there, but I'll see if I can put it up in and get it or something here, here, something like this. Um, uh, uniform between, so this is draw from a uniform distribution between zero and whatever the width of the space is, okay? And I'm going to go take that X one and I'm going to put it into each of these. The community place is going to be the same darn thing. So, sorry, workplaces, we'll do it for each of these populations. Okay. Um, workplaces, there we go. And then I'll do it for homes. Um, same thing in the specified point. We're going to do it between this and space width. And we already have it for people to use the homes and community places in the specified point zero in the space width. Great. And now we're going to do what? We, what do we still have to set? They're what? Y values. So let's go back. They're Y values, ladies and gentlemen. I know this is kind of like chopping the green onions or something. It, it just, you got to do it. And, um, this is one way to do it. There's actually a more elegant way that once we get started to introduce the state charts, we could have had them placed go at the beginning of their state chart to their home and all would have been happy and we wouldn't have had to worry about this. But um, there seemed to be interest and, and it is good to know about this. Okay, so what I've done is I've located every one of these populations except for people I've located them in a random location, explicitly drawn it. So there's no deus ex machina. There's no like special stuff going on behind the scenes with random layout, but with the population, people are placed in their homes. Great. So let's go build early, build often. Let's make sure it's a happy camper. It is. It's happiness positively beams. And let's lay it out. And we see something of beaming beauty. Do we not? And somehow, I'll note from my remote attendance is the crowd is somehow still not going wild here. Um, okay, <laughs> so uh, so here we have people located in their homes. We have uh, community locations, workplaces, schools scattered around. Um, uh, okay, um, for some reason, I'm not seeing many schools. Are there the schools there? Yes, they are. Uh, Maybe change the gray scores. Maybe it's yellow and not turn yellow. Um, 
Yeah, so what's, what's... Oh yeah, yeah. So there, there is a, there is a school up here, right? And there's a school here, and there's a school here. So they're they're just different colors. Okay, okay. Are we ready? Okay, we have spatial layout, but we don't yet have mobility. And I promised you mobility. Maybe then the crowd will go wild. Okay. Um. So here we go. Um. We're gonna post this and. And you folks can grab that if you're behind, okay? Um, so there we go. Um, okay. So save it to version three now. And now we're going to introduce the heart of the matter, mobility, okay? So first we're gonna have to figure out where, people need to go. And that will be based on their age. People of school age will go to schools. Those of, of working age will go to workplaces. Okay. And we'll assume that schools also handle preschool needs. Okay. So I'm going to associate people with an age. How do I do that? What do I need to do? A parameter in what? in person it's part of the theory of personhood people have ages okay great so look if we were running this model over a long period age wouldn't be a fixed static parameter it wouldn't be a constant it would be an aspect of state but here we're going to treat it as a constant because our focus is going to be in short term hour by hour we're not going to we're not going to be running the model for decades empires will not rise and fall of the course of the simulation. It's going to be just, you know, uh, days or hours. So I, I think Ben is, is, is at least getting the humor, um, even if he's not going wild yet. Um, okay, so, so let's, uh, let's go now add in to person uh, some, some age, okay? This is going to be age in years. Why am I saying in years here? Uh, the model is an hour. So if I just said age, someone might be forgiven for saying, well, okay, if if they're 24, does that 24 mean they're 24 years old or 24 hours old, right? And, and there is a difference in case you didn't notice. Um, yeah, uh, it won't, won't comment more on that. Okay. Um, so this is going to be age in years, and by default, we'll assume people are um, uh, are you know uh, twenty years old. Okay, um, I, I know that seems like. Uh, um, I have a question. Shouldn't yes, be question in years uh, shouldn't be integer since well a year when we say we say one year. No, 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 no. We can uh, more generally we'll treat it as a double because it's uh, it doesn't have to be an integer. Integer is a nice way we often approximate it, but but there's no reason particularly to privilege that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, okay. So we're, we made an age in years. Each person is gonna have an age in years. And now we need to go set the assumptions for that, which uh, are given on a population level. So we'll say for the population here, the age will be drawn from a uniform continuous distribution um, between zero and 65, let's say. Um, no, so we'll say 75. Okay, fine. Um, so we're going to have some older people, some younger people, okay? And draw it from a distribution. And incidentally, just for those pursuing projects, uh, or those in seeking to know more, you'll notice that you can choose, you know, dozens of possible distributions. And distributions have specific characteristics and context where each is appropriate. Um, uh, I'm not going to get into that, but you should recognize that um, it's not a matter of just picking any old distribution you want. You often pick distributions which are used for certain purposes. Um, okay. Um, they, they have certain assumptions about them and certain characteristics. Some give counts. Some give values between zero and one, for example. Some can give negative values, while others don't. And 
some are skewed to the right or skewed to the left, et cetera. Anyway, um, uh, age and years, we draw between zero and 75. Great. Now, um, we're going to further associate with each person. Um, uh, we're going to further associate with them um, uh, some, uh, some information on their closest school and uh, a workplace with which they might be associated. So here for person, we're going to add, they already have a home, but we're going to add in a parameter here, ladies and gentlemen, for, uh, for school, okay? Maybe we'll call it um, uh, nearest school or, 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 or school. Um, uh, and we're going to also add in one for, uh, for a workplace, okay? Um, and uh, what are the types of each of those going to be? Can anyone say? Uh, I'm sorry? Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yes, precisely. So, um, okay. Um, now, there's a bit of... Um, bit of need here uh, associated with um, uh, the, the need for agents to figure out what's their associated workplace or associated school. Um, I'd like to be able to show something there. Um, it'd be, for didactic reasons, it'd be nice to, uh, to do this at first. So I'm gonna set the type of this to, for their school to be school. And I'm going to set their workplace to be uh, a workplace, okay? Um, and we'll give this a, there we go, a workplace. Okay, great. Now, um, again, these are assumptions. So where are they set? Where are the assumptions about them set? In, in Maine, in what area of Maine? The population, right? It sets the characteristics for the person. So now we have to give something for the school. And for the moment, we'll give it a random school. So how do we do that? Judging by how we did homes? Schools dot random, right? Yeah, okay, good, good. Okay, great. And workplace, guess what? Workplaces dot random, right? Okay. Now, we're going to refine that later, but for now, that's what we're going to do. Great. Um, okay, build early, build often. Um, okay, we added these characteristics to a person, and we set their characteristics in the population. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. And we, we set that for all people. We associate even veritable infants with workplaces, and we associated elders with schools needlessly, but um, we'll come back to this issue. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now, though, is to uh, put in place uh, a, a mechanism that will lead someone to go to different places during the day. Um, overnight, they'll be at home, um, they'll then go, depending on their age, to the school or workplace. And following some working hours, they'll go to a random community place, and then they'll come home again. At any one time, they're at one of these places. What could I do to associate the person with a certain situation that changes through the day, what place they're at? I can give them with a what? Uh, you could do it with the yeah, you could do it with the schedule. It's an interesting idea, but I'm going to do it with. It could involve a schedule, but I there's a very simple mechanism we we've been using at an agent level to denote what situation they're in with respect to say infection status. Uh, yeah, messages are a way from one agent to influence another, the environment to influence the person, but it's a simpler thing than that. Period. 
state chart. Yes, we just want to have a state chart, ladies and gentlemen. So let's go add a state chart. Shall we not? So could you, uh, before the next step, could you please post the model? There's there's some people online that are falling sure. behind. Sure. Uh, I will post version three. Thank you. There we are. And version three is on its way. Okay. Okay. Now we're on to version four. Um, okay. Uh, so... Uh, Okay, great. Um, so we're going to add a state chart, and the state chart is going to be state chart governing people. So we're going to have, and this will be called mobility state chart, mobility, or let's call it location state chart. Location state chart. Hmm. Um, great. And uh, we're going to have a state here that's going to be at home. Mm -hmm. And then there's going to be a state which will go to either uh, at school or maybe we'll maybe we'll put that on the left here um, because it's it's for younger people. it's lower. X location, and then uh, at work. And then we're gonna have another state in community. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're gonna be moving between these, these different areas, okay? Um, uh, so this is, this is good. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this in part to prepare you with some skills for assignment two. Okay. Um, state charts will be a valuable asset in your pursuit of, of said problem set. If you're, if, if you, if you're pursuing that option, of course. Okay. So what is a state chart beyond states? It also has what? Transitions indeed transitions. So we're going to have transitions from home to work, but there's something we need to do to figure out a given person, does do they go to home or to work? Guess, who, guess what it will depend on? Age, ladies and gentlemen, age and deed. Um, also, it depends on, uh, on the hour of the work. Like, for example, if it is at the start of the day or at the end of the day, as you said, for example, we are depending on the hours. So we can measure like, okay, if it is now past eight hours, it might go to the school to pick up his children or go to the community to buy something or have fun or go back to home. Yes, I'm but we'll be capturing that in a different mechanism. Yes, you'll see. Okay. With the, with the transitions. Um, so th that will be handled very readily with uh, remember agents, uh, an agent-based model has uh, a variety of characteristics. There's the parties, primary parameters, actions, rules that govern those actions, actions change state, and rules that govern those actions. And it's actually through rules that we capture this. The state chart uh, captures at once the states, the actions that can change the states, like transitions between them and the rules that govern those. And it turns out the time can be captured here um, uh, in, in a simple way with, uh, with the rules. So we're gonna drag in a branch here. We're gonna have a transition into this branch. And the branch is going to, guess what it's gonna determine, anyone? It's gonna, it, the, what's gonna determine in this branch whether they go to school or work? Age indeed. So we're going to put in here, it's going to be a conditional here. Um, uh, they're going to go, actually, I'm going to make this other one. This one will be the default. This one will be the condition. And guess what the condition will be? If their age is what? Let's say less than, we're going to talk about K through 12 schools. So it's going to be and including childcare. So it's going to be age less than than uh or equal to 18. so the condition here is age in years 
less than or equal to 18.0, okay? Um, and you could quibble, you know, maybe maybe it's 19 or whatever, I'm not gonna get into, okay? Um, so um, we're, gonna, we're gonna deal with this, uh, the timing of this in just a minute, but let's deal with the basic conduct, um, connectivity. So if they're young, they'll go to school, otherwise they'll go to work. And then after that, they will go into the community and perhaps they'll do some shopping, perhaps they'll go to a club, um, perhaps they'll go and uh, accomplish some, uh, some socialization, whatever it is, and they'll go to the community and then we'll assume that they will go back home, okay? And I'm going to, I just dragged this one, I double clicked on it and I, I'm gonna drag it back up there and it looks uh, all the, the hideousness um, is coming out, but I'm going to, I'm going to tame that hideousness uh, in my crude way um, by having something like this. Hey, no, well, okay, fine. Um, so there we go. And okay, it's at least less hideous now. Um, okay. Um, so. Once again, for those operating remotely, I will report that the crowd is not revolting against me. Okay. Um, okay, great. So let's deal with this timing issue. We're going to assume that people uh, are going to spend part of the day here part, and, and go on. And so we're going to have them leave at timeout transactions. Are timeout transitions memory less or memory full? They're memory full. You will not transition except after you've been in that state for exactly a certain time. A memoryless transition, how would a memoryless transition be different? Yes, Ben. Chance per unit time, independent of how long you've been in that state, you have that same kick at the can for the next hour of leaving, or the next minute of leaving, or the next second of leaving. However, finally you want to dice it, the same chance per unit time. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have them be at home between 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. So if you think about it, right, it's eight hours in the morning from 12 to 8, then another four hours in the evening, right? So 12 hours they'll be at home. Are we okay with that? Okay, um, you, could, you could quibble, okay, so maybe, you know, how long are they gonna spend in the community? They're really gonna be there till eight o'clock, but I'm, I'm, so they're gonna be 12 hours. They will leave their home, um, uh, I'll, and I'll call this transition, um, head out, head out for day. I, um, com, maybe I'll call it commute, commute, that's good. Um, um, and it'll be after 12 hours. Remember I said 8 p.m. to 8 a.m., 12 hours right there. Are we okay with that? Okay. Um, they'll be at work or at school, let's say, for eight hours. And again, you could quibble, but I'll, I'll um, um, so eight hours for each, okay? Um, so for this one here and this one here, we'll say eight hours, okay? Um, so eight to four. Um, and we will call this, um, um, uh, so um, out from school, out from school. It's a good thing to show the name. Um, it makes your intentions clear. Um, and uh, we will, for this one call out from work, out from work. Um, and uh, I will also show that, okay, eight hours. And then in the community, so they'll get out at 4 p.m. and they'll be in the community for four hours, okay? So, and we'll say go home, okay? And show name. Okay. Um, 
simple idea. We've captured the schedule in a in a simple way. There are more elegant ways to do this. There are more more to the point. There's more general ways to do this. Uh, but, quick question: How much we consider the go home will be the time for it? Well, it was four hours in the community. Four hours. Okay, got it. Four to eight p.m. Yeah, that they were in the in the community. Okay. Okay. Um. So if I ran this model, so first of all, build early, build often. I, I built it. It's a happy camper. If I ran this model, would anything happen? No. Why not? We haven't told them to to move, right? Um, so let's tell them to move. Are we okay with this? Okay. Okay. So for their okay, so we want to tell them to move. Maybe the easiest thing will be going back from the community to home. So when they go home on this transition, there'll be an action that takes place. What will that action do? It will send them where? Guess what? Well, guess from the name, they go where? Go home, right? Right? Okay. Um, okay, so we're going to do here, um, we're gonna put in place the key sort of bit of logic here, okay? Um, it will be um, this dot move to, you know, actually don't need this if you don't want to, uh, um, but move to, mm, um, and you move them to an agent. And guess what agent, to what agent will you move them? The one referred to by what? Home, the home parameter, right? They have a parameter called home. It is a reference to their home and will tell them to go home. Are we okay with that? Okay. Are we okay? Okay. Hearing no objections, we'll continue on. Okay. Um, great. So now suppose we want them to go from home to their workplace or from home to their school. Let's let's pick it from their workplace. How do we do this? How do we have them go to their workplace here? Yeah, move to move to workplace, right? You can make it this dot move to this dot workplace if you want to be careful. But I'm going to move to my workplace and guess what this is going to be? What am I going to do here? Uh, yes, move to school. Mm -hmm. Are we okay with that? Okay, I, I'm, I'm not hearing, hearing people start shouting and- um, There is a problem. So you, ways. Okay, what's that? So when you put the action, you miss, you forgot the, to add the miss, uh, semicolon over there. Yes, yeah, well, it, actually any logic's forgiving about that, but you're quite right. Really, I should be careful about that. Um, move to this. Uh, that that's fine. I, I think it uh, it will forgive all those because they're the the final statement. But I will put those in because it's good hygiene to do that. Um, uh, and uh, this one had that. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So so now we still have to yes, much yes. Indeed. Indeed, yes, we're assigning it right now to everyone. And and I mentioned that earlier, even, even veritable infants have workplaces right now assigned to them, right? Um, and there's actually much more elegant ways we could capture this. Um, uh, if there were time, I would do it. It's 39 pass, so I'm just trying to do this quickly. Yeah. Um, uh, you're right. So we just assigned them a, 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 a sort of the everyone a, a workplace that they would go to if they were of age, et cetera. Okay, out from work. Now we're what what are we going to do here um, for pick a place in the community? Well, we're gonna have them go to a, a random community spot. Okay, a random community spot. Are we okay with that? Okay. Um, so 
uh, we're going to end the action. Now, um, I'm going to do something which is going to be shocking. It's going to, it could lead to a revolt. So if the Zoom connection is caught off, you'll know that, you know, the, the students have got the better of me here. Um, but I, I promise you, I'm going to come back and remediate my sins that I will commit now in front of you in the most flagrant of ways. Okay. So, so, so rest assured, I will remediate the, 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 flagrant violation of, of proper aesthetics of coding. Okay, so I'm going to pick a random place in the community to which they will head, okay? Are we okay with this? Okay, how can I find a, how can I find the set of community places, eh? Where is it located? Okay, and what is it called? The community places there are called what? They're called community places, right? We haven't left a lot for, 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 for guesswork, right? Um, that's good. Use intention revealing names, okay? Um, so main dot community places. Are we okay with this? Dot random is going to give us a random community place. Will it not? And what do I want to do with that random community place? I want to move there. Okay. Are we are we okay with that? That's where they come from out from work. Are we okay with that? Okay. And now I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now this is where okay, this is where like I may be stabbed by several students. Um okay, I'm going to cut and paste, copy and paste. Okay, I have sinned, ladies and gentlemen. This is a horrible thing that I'm doing, and I will not put up with it. I'm going to come back and remediate this forthwith, but I'm going to I'm going to show this to you in its brutal form. So I've just copy pasted this bit of logic, which has meaning associated with which is hidden. I haven't abstracted it, and that troubles me so greatly. I'm I'm losing my capacity to properly speak. Um, okay, so. So now we're going to have people moving and you see them pulsing. Some people go between their homes and workplaces. Some people go between their homes and schools. Um, uh, and, uh, and then, and you'll notice that community places are also visited by people during the day. Do you see that? Do you see them visiting community places? See, see these community places have people sort of popping into them. Do you see that? Mm. If we slowed it down, we would actually see them sort of going back and forth here. Um, I could slow it down even, even more, but um, one way to see it, which is more elegant yet, is, and uh, Wade can uh, perhaps uh, uh, remind me of this, but if we had, Right, um, in person, uh, okay, so my memory is, yeah, here we are. In person, if we have movement and we have initial speed, meters per second, I'm going to set them to move as a positively glacial speed of 0.1 meters per second. Maybe they're, maybe they're, they're you know, at risk of falling on packed snow and ice at this time of year. Maybe they're walking in ruts in the road and they gotta be really, really careful. So where'd I go? I went person and went to initial speed. Um, and I'm just gonna do this for show, but what we would see is we would see them moving here uh, when, when it comes time to move, you might actually see them move. Uh, see, see here, okay. and. There we go. Um, so they're at school and work right now, and then they move home. And it looks like even now you you don't see them with with quite the level of um, okay, so here we go. So they should be leaving here uh, and going to their workplaces. Let's see. So it's like three o'clock in the morning. Um, 
So now it's like four o'clock in the morning. Uh, okay, so okay, so so now now we should be approaching the witching hour. Um, okay, so okay, okay, yeah, they still don't go quite. If you slowed them down enough, you could probably see them. Um, uh, I I tried it on my computer, and if you make it very fast, you can see the movement of the people very very fast. So. If, if you sorry, if you increase the speed to the maximum, you can see this the movement of the people still. Um, the maximum, so like that one. Okay. Uh, yeah. My my goal was. Uh, I don't. You're saying like, if, well, yeah, I'll see it. yeah, but that's that's not the. Um, <laughs> that's not quite the the tempo I was searching for. I was searching to actually see them kind of in. In, in a in a very slow, stately way, move between their destinations. Um, Wade might be able to capture this better than I, but um, I was hoping that that number of meters per second, setting that default uh, speed, would would help this. Uh, Wade, any any comments Melvin, on that? Melvin said that tries. I, I was asking a question for Wade here. No, I I think the. Uh... The space is only 500 by 500 meters. I see. Okay. Yeah. So even 0.1 is pretty fast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, if you slowed it down enough, you could probably see them moving back. They are actually moving in a continuous fashion. But Ardalan is right. I mean, if you do this, you can. It, they'll sometimes interrupt it while they are moving through the streets in a in a somewhat discombobulated way. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, though my sin kind of rests heavily upon me. Um, and I do not feel right letting this class out um, before, before fixing this. So I'm going to introduce a bit of abstraction. These are using the same logic. Conceptually, what's happening is I'm moving to a random community place. And uh, I, I do want to show you how you can abstract in general. Obviously, this is a minor case of it a single line, but you will often find these cases where you're tempted to you know, cut paste because you have the same logic in multiple places. So I'm gonna introduce a function from the agent palette and the function will be um, uh, go, um, so uh, move uh, or go um, visit, maybe I'll call it visit community, okay? It has an action. It's an action. It returns nothing. And this function will take on the responsibility of performing this. So instead of doing that, I'll just call visit community. And, and I'll do the same thing over here. I'll do visit community. And I'm, I've copied the the uh, logic here to put into the function body, and we are we are done. And my sins have been absolved. Okay, um, so now I have a function whose job it is in life to to get them to visit the community, and I can call it at multiple places and capture the common intention between this place and this place. I don't have to worry that I'll fix it in one and not fix it in the other or keep the logic the same as the logic becomes more complex there. It'll, it'll be all in one place. And now we have a model where they are mixing the community. And now I have a challenge for you, ladies and gentlemen. I would like you to elaborate this model, not in the next minute, but indeed in the next uh, set of five days so that they'll be moving to these different places and they'll be in a network. At any place, they'll be in a network so they're connected with nearby people, especially people at that same place. And guess what? They can infect people via that network. But the network, will it be a fixed network? Will it be a fixed network? No, it will not. The network will shift every time they shift location. During part of the day, I'll be close to people in the classroom. 
during the part of the day I'll be close to people at home. During part of the day I'll be people close to people who are in the same shop that I am in the community or in the same workplace. And there'll be spread of infection in those locations. And what a model like this would allow us to do verily will be to ask what if questions about limiting people's schedules, right? So suppose we shut schools. Suppose we were to have workplace support. Suppose we were to have people stay at home. How would that limit the spread of infection? Do you get the point? So I'm gonna. This, this should be familiar territory from past examples, building a network and having them spread messages over the network. You've already got most of the models here. You'll just layer that on top of that. I'll give you some results for doing this, okay? I'm gonna challenge you with that. And on Tuesday, we will reconvene and look at the solution, okay? That's the plan, okay? But for now, rest happily with your first mobility model, um, which shows uh, the, the peripatetic wanderings of populations among workplaces, schools, community places, and homes. Okay, thank you very much. And I look forward to, to going through the, uh, the exercise with you over coming days.